Welcome to the fourth video tutorial for the Skyrim Creation Kit. Clutter! Yes, we'll be diving straight into the dark and dangerous world of clutter, or the process of filling your level with exciting things. Our diving partner for this excursion will be producer Phil Nelson. Take it away, Phil. If you'll take a look at the level we have in front of us, you'll notice that a lot of the walls are just repeating versions of themselves. So we're going to need to take care of this. Otherwise, it'll look uniform, doesn't look great. First, let's click on one of these walls here. With the wall selected, we're going to hit Control and F to bring up Search and Replace. And in this window, we're going to just switch to a different wall side. How about 03? Now you'll see it just changed the vines a little bit. But when you have two pieces next to each other, it looks a lot better when they're not the same exact piece. So that's just adding up a little bit of variance. Now let's look at this door over here. We're going to do something to draw the player's eye in by simply just swapping two pieces. Let's select the two pieces on either side of the door. Now this will work because they are the same piece. Then we'll hit Control and F to bring up the search and replace. And we're just going to change this to the O2. Now you'll notice it swapped it. These pieces that curve out, they sort of create this nice little sight line to the door. So it should draw the player's focus to the doorway, making it a little bit easier to navigate in the world. The next thing we're going to take on is placing actual pieces of clutter. You'll notice that this floor is very flat. It's very flat and the textures tend to repeat themselves. They look great, but you don't want to show the repetition. So let's select a piece of the floor. Now we're going to use duplicate, which is control D. And then we're going to swap this for a raised version of the floor. So we used a nor room small floor raised 01. It sounds a little confusing, but once you learn the naming convention of the kits, it's going to make going through the pieces that much quicker. So now you can see instead of the flat floor there, we have this nice undulating piece with broken up edges. And we could just throw this around the room, maybe put one in a corner to break up the straight line where the wall and the corner meet. So now we have this nice little broken up floor. We'll use Control D, grab another one. Don't worry about mushing it through the wall too much. As long as it doesn't show up on a room next to you, it's all good. Turn it around so it doesn't look like the other one. And let's put one more in the center. Control D to duplicate. And then we'll use Control F. And instead of the O1, we'll switch to the O2 which gives us that nice little break in the center. So it doesn't look exactly like the other pieces, makes it look a little bit nicer. The next thing we're going to place is probably the number one item in the LD toolkit. It is rubble piles. Rubble piles are great for everything. We use them to break up spaces, use them to cover little gaps that we may have, cover up any hard edges and place pieces. They are probably one of our if not our number one piece. So let's place one now. I'm gonna click on this raised floor, duplicate, control D, and then we're gonna control F, and we're gonna place a nor rubble pile. Now let's place an O4, and you'll see it covers up our raised floor. So let's move it back a little. You'll also notice that by putting it on the raised floor and pushing it back into the wall, we're getting rid of the hard edges where the rubble meet the floor, like here, which look a little bit unnatural. So if we hide them like this, we get a nice little rubble pile. Maybe pull this out a little bit more so we can pull this out. That looks a whole lot more natural. So let's duplicate this, slide it over, and then we'll use Control F, 
to turn it into a different rubble pile. Maybe a new seven, which you'll see is a smaller rubble pile. And it looks different enough. There's about eight rubble piles in this kit, which you can do a whole lot with, but a great way to make the same piles look a little bit different is with scaling. So we have this tiny version of this one and we're gonna duplicate it, move it out a little bit. And besides rotating it, we're gonna scale it up a little bit. Let's just make this one a 1.5, make it a little bit bigger. And you can see it scales up in size. Throw it against the wall and maybe just tilt it down a little bit. Holding the right mouse button. So now we have some rubble piles around our room. And now let's add a static piece, maybe an altar, something nice for the center of the room. So we'll click on this raised floor here, Control D to duplicate it. So we bring up the menu with Control F and go ruins, altar, enter. And you'll note that because we duplicated a piece with a lower pivot point, our altar is in the floor. So we're going to raise this in the Z axis. So by just holding down Z, we'll just move in this one axis and then we can left mouse click and with using just the mouse, move it up and down. So let's make sure it's not floating above the ground. There we go. So now we have our altar roughly in the middle of the room. So we have the start of a great room. Well, pretty good room at least. So the next type of clutter we're going to get to is the miscellaneous item. These are objects the player can pick up into their inventory and generally just move them around the world and manipulate them in game. Let's fast forward as I place some now. Let's review working with dynamic objects. These are objects that move around and are affected by the physics of the real world game. So to mimic what those would be like in the editor, we have the Havoc button. Havoc button is this HK button with the red bouncing ball up here. And first you're going to want to select the item you want to Havoc and then click it, the Havoc button. And you'll see how the object will react as if it were in game. Or if you want to give things a more natural scattered look, you can take a bunch of objects like these, pick them up a little bit and hit the Havoc key. And you'll see they'll fall. They'll settle a little bit differently than they had been. It doesn't look as placed. The next type of moving clutter we have are animating objects. While we're in movable statics, we'll look for a generic banner. So here's our list of generic banners and let's just place a blue one in the world. There we go. So you can see in the editor, they don't look very animated, but once again, using our Havoc button with the object selected, we can see what the movement will look like in the game. So this is what this banner would look like if the player had walked into our little dungeon in the game. The next thing we're gonna deal with is the actual loot that the player will get. We'll speed up as I place this armor object. I wanted to make it look like someone stabbed this dagger into this piece of armor. So I'm gonna position a dagger as if it were stabbed into the armor. And then we're gonna double click on the dagger and we're gonna click Don't Havoc Settle and hit OK. Don't Havoc Settle is amazing. It prevents the object from settling when the player first walks into the cell, but if the player interacts with it while in the cell, it will Havoc. So for instance, here we have our knife sticking in our armor. When the player walks into this room, they'll just see the knife sticking into the armor. 
If they go up to the knife and knock it out, it'll fall out of the armor, just as if it were really placed there. You can also use this trick to hang objects on walls. Let's speed up and put a little more loot around. Now we'll place a chest and fill it with leveled loot. Now this here is the full list of what can possibly come out of this chest. To see what will happen when the player selects it, we're going to preview calculated results. So at level 1, a player is going to get a restore health, a restore stamina, soul gem, petty, iron arrow, some gold, total value of about 43 gold, pretty nice at level 1. But say we want to see what a level 30 player would get. So we come over to preview level, choose 30, and then preview calculator result. So a level 30 player will get some more gold, but an elven mace totaling about 358 gold. So that's pretty nice. And it's a great way to see what the player will be getting at what level and not having to hand place different loot based on each player level which would just be a pain in the butt to account for everything. Now, there's also another similar way to do this, and that's with dummy objects. You can refer to the wiki for more information on dummy objects. The next object we're going to move on to is furniture. Furniture can be a simple object such as a bench or more complex items like an alchemy table. I'll place both in this segment. Pay close attention to the markers which determine where characters will animate. And the next and final thing we'll be going over are doors. Doors are doors. Pretty simple. Let's click on door here under world objects. Close this. And door, as I said, is a door. If it's open and you click on it, it closes. If it's closed and you click on it, it opens. But there's a few other things you can do, little quick tricks. So we're going to want a small door because we're in a small area. And we're in the Nordic kit, so we'll use the Nordic prefix and look for a small door. And let's grab this. Now we'll make sure with Q that our grid snap is proper so we can get it into the doorway without any seams or clipping. Now the first thing you may notice is that the door, we don't know which way it'll open. So to take care of this, double click on the door and open by default. Very simple. And you can see which way the door is facing. But since this is the first room, we don't want the door to open into the player. So I'll just spin it around. Make sure that it's correct, not clipping with anything. And then you can just double click toggle open by default off if you want to close it or you can leave it open it's up to you the other little neat thing you can do is lock the door to do that once again double click on the door and we're going to go to the lock tab and click the locked checkbox now the first thing we have to set is the level of the lock novice being the easiest master being the hardest require key means that this door cannot be picked literally requires the key cannot be opened otherwise so let's just set an adept so this way we don't need a key the player can encounter this and just open the door we can also specify a key used to open the door if one exists that covers most of the object types you'll be using when cluttering now let's hit the fast forward button as i finish cluttering lokir's tomb
And with that, another design secret of the deep is unlocked. Next time, nav meshing. What does it mean? Jeff Brown will show us. In the meantime, hit up creationkit.com for more information.